So what's going on guys, Kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 6 best and fastest ways to make a lot of money in Albion Online. So a few years ago when I started playing this game it was very confusing and I never knew what activity should I be doing for more money. I knew that I wanted to do PvP and be one of the richest players in the game but to do so I had to experiment and try out different silver making methods. So in this video I will show you my personal 6 favorite money making strategies and for each strategy I will give you a real life example with some tips and tricks that will help you to save more money in the long run and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first one which is crafting. And crafting in Albion is one of the most fun parts of the game because you get to equip what you make. The most important thing to understand from the very start is that crafting is very time and resource intensive process. But the long term rewards are very much worth it from both a self sufficiency and making money in the game. So then in a quick summary like in any game you can craft items by collecting materials and then you start crafting from tier 1 and each level will require for you to craft multiple duplicates to then earn fame and unlock the next tier slash level gear. So with that said let's see what the process of making money with crafting actually looks like and I have split this category in 4 different parts. So the first part is completing the tutorial. Once you complete the first part of the tutorial you will unlock the novice adventure mastery in the destiny board which will in return unlock the trainee craftsman mastery group. This node will allow you to craft novice items at 4 different types of crafting stations which are mage tower, warrior's forge, Hunter's Lodge and Toolmaker. So then moving over to the second part which is where we choose the items that we want to craft. For beginners I would recommend to start crafting items that you use yourselves. So for example if you play Fire Staff as a mage class then start crafting cloud gear with Fire Staff and then go from there. Crafting in early stages will be a big investment but when you get the ball rolling you will make huge amount of money. So in the second part we want to choose the items that we want to craft to level up our crafting level. So if we take again the full cloth armor approach then we level up our cloth armor to at least tier 6 by just crafting this color robe and then all of our crafts we study to get even more experience. Then as for the third step this is the time where we decide on how we will get the materials which we will then use to craft these items. My suggestion is if you don't have millions of silver to start investing in your crafting adventure then start gathering materials yourself and then later we'll be able to craft with zero time spent outside of the city. And then lastly the last and final part is experimenting. Our main goal with crafting is to find the items that are lacking in supply and which are overpriced so then we come in by starting to make lower tier gear and selling it. And if this works then we invest more money and make more of this specific item. And then on top of all this when we have found our niche in which we want to provide our crafting services then we can start using focus points which with premium we get 10,000 and by clicking on the small button we can spend the points to get some of these materials back which will be useful when crafting higher tier gear. And then lastly to improve your speed and quality of the items you want to use the salad consumable as well. Ok so now let's summarize all of these 4 points in one final example. So I personally right now play my permafrost build. So for my example we will look into this weapon. So then going to the marketplace and after some time I noticed a big price difference between 5.1 and 6.1 permafrost. So now my decision is to get tier 6 permafrost crafting which I can do by just crafting cheap and easy one hand frost staffs. Then when we get to tier 6 I decide how I will be getting the materials for crafting. I personally don't need to gather anything as I have already bunch of silver. So I buy the materials needed in the marketplace then I use them to craft items then we list them for sale and then we sell it for profit. By me right now making this video I stumbled upon of one of my next tips which will be about item flipping and selling cheap items for more expensive price. So for example when we take a look at the 6.1 permafrost I found the stuff for 400k and the rest players sell it for 500 or 600. So we can easily buy it and then resell it for 100k profit. So in a quick summary crafting is a great way to make money but it will take time to get it up and running. But as well if you are a crafter that does not mean that you can only make money by crafting because when you participate in the marketplace you can stumble upon good opportunities when items sell for cheap and you can resell them for a lot more money. So stay tuned because later in the video I will explain on how to get this and use it to your advantage. So then moving over to the second way on how I like to make money and it is by investing. So let me explain myself. 
In real life, if your parents still own a currency from the 1950s or any other valuable but old item, then that item is now worth 3 or 4 times more. And what we want to do is apply the same principle but in Albion. So I personally took a break from Albion for about 4 to 5 months, but still in this time I made over 10 million silver by just investing my money in items that over time get more expensive. So for me, what I did, I bought few rare skins that were listed in the marketplace for a million apiece and then later I resold them for 2-3 million. The biggest downside for gamers is that when we see something on sale, we think that item is now cheap and not worth your time. But in reality, that over time rare items become more rare and harder to get. So then that item now is worth 2 or 3 times more. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to give you a real example, so here it is. About few months ago, I was collecting every monthly premium chester board, which usually are these different mounts. And then I sold them about a week or two ago. And from about 4 mounts, which are 4 months of opening chests, I made around 1 to 2 million silver. Of course, if you take a look at how much money you can make by farming corrupted dungeons or crafting, it is a lot more. But what I like about this method is that you can easily make money by doing absolutely nothing, than just buying or collecting these mounts or skins, and then waiting few months and then selling them for easy profit, which will cost you zero work whatsoever. So if you want to make money for basically no work, then just buy premium and save these special mounts, and then the longer you wait, the more money you will make in the long run. And on top of all this, you can do the same thing by just looking through the marketplace and buying all the cool skins, and then reselling them few months later. Usually players ask me on the best way to make money, and I usually tell them two things. The first thing is that there is no one best way to make money, so you want to try out everything and see what works for you. And in the best case scenario, try to make money from 2-3 different methods. So then if one gets nerfed or is not that profitable, then you can still have few other ways to make money. And then lastly, the last suggestion that I want to give you is to never have more than few million silver in your bank account. Right now I have about 12 million silver. And for beginner players that want to make money, you should never have this much. Because all of the silver is just standing still and not making you more money. So you want to have 1 or 2 million silver to have some lunch money and then put the rest of your silver in items. So for example, you want to buy the Dire Wolf for 300,000 and now instead of the 300k in the bank, now you have 300k in an item and if you ever need that 300k back to buy something, then you just simply sell the item but then if you keep it for longer, then when you sell it, you can make more money and the more items you buy like this, which are long term investments, the more money you can make in the long run. So then moving over to the next best way to make money and it is by playing corrupted dungeons or 2v2 hellgates. So for most PvP players, it's not that easy to make money, unless if you already have millions of silver to invest in good gear, and if you have a bunch of friends to play with. But for most players that usually only have 2-3 to three friends, or if you play by yourself and if you only want to do PvP, then this is the best way to make money. So first of all, we pick Corrupted Dungeons and 2v2 Hellgates, because Corrupted Dungeons you can do solo, and 2v2 Hellgates you just need one more friend. Or you can join discords and look for a single player in the global chat. So then when you decide to go to corrupted dungeons or hellgates, then here are two ways that you can make money. Either way you can rat or do pvp. So let me explain. Ratting means that you can go into a pvp dungeon, but instead of actually participating in the pvp, you only farm monsters and open chests. And as soon as you find an enemy, you just run away from him. Then leave the dungeon or wait for the enemy to leave and then go to the next one. And it is pretty hard to catch a player that just wants to run. So this method is very easy but not that fun. And ratting requires a lot less silver investment at the start. So if this is how you want to make money, then check my video on the top 5 best rat builds. But then on the other hand, for players that want to make money by PvP, aka by fighting other players, then you again want to decide to go into a 2v2 Hellgate or a corrupted dungeon. And and the same principle applied that you farm mobs and open chests. But then when you find an enemy, instead of running away, you want to fight him and take his loot or lose your own. Like I said, the second method is a lot more fun, but as well a lot more challenging, and requires a lot more silver. For a beginner player, I recommend to first of all rat few dungeons till you get few million silver, then decide which build you want to use and then do PvP. And lucky for you, I have another video for the top 5 best corrupted dungeons slash hellgate builds, so check the video out. But then besides that, your main objective when doing PvP is to find the easiest targets that you want to kill. So then you can loot them and get better gear. 
In Albion, you could be running the best gear and be the highest skilled player, but still some builds are just better than other builds, and against one build you can be stronger, and then against another one you can be weaker. So the most optimal way of making money when doing PvP is deciding which builds we want to fight and which not. So for example, here are two different videos for two different builds, and in the video you can see which builds are easier to fight against and which not. Similarly, like other money making methods, you want to make money by experimenting and trial and error. What you want to do is find a build that you like and is strong, which I recommend of course to watch my video. But besides that, you want to start using the build and over time, you will learn which enemy builds you are stronger against or which not. And then you just fight enemies that are easy money targets, and then for the rest, you just leave the dungeon and move over to the next one. So from me playing different MMORPGs, I took the principle that for example, the mage class doesn't have a lot of defensives, but it can do the highest damage numbers. So then you want to fight other classes that are slow and you can run around them while doing damage from range. Or you can fight other range classes, but then on the other hand, you don't want to fight tanks or classes that are fast and can catch you easily because then they will get close to you and as you don't have that many defenses, you will be very easy target for them. So in my summary, one of the most fun and easiest ways to make money is by picking the targets that you want to fight and this will give you easy silver and that's about it. So then moving over to the fourth money making method which is the black market slash flipping items for easy and fast money. So marketplace aka the action house is the place where you can buy and sell items which is the main part of the Albion online economy. While players can trade anywhere in the world, the majority of trading in Albion happens through the marketplace. Buying and selling on the marketplace is easy. To buy or sell you have two options, you can either way fulfill a purchasing an existing order or you can create your own order. Even if an item has active buy or sell order, you may want to create your own in order to make or save more money. So then let me give you a quick and easy tutorial on how you can make money by item flipping. So it took me about 2 minutes to find this and any player can do the same thing in his free time. So first of all you want to open your marketplace and look through items. What I found is that there is a big price difference between tier 6 and tier 6.1 permafrost. So then I bought this permafrost for 294k silver but I could have saved even few thousand silver more if I bought the cheapest option. But besides that we want to buy the flat 6 permafrost. Then we go to tier 6 runes and buy 200 of them. Then we go to the artifact foundry which every single city has and then we open the third enchant equipment tab and then we make our flat weapon into 6.1. So from us spending about 295,000 for weapon and 55k for runes we come up at the cost of 350k and now we can sell it for 400k or even more. If we buy this one cheap one and sell it for 500 or 550k. And this is how we easily made a bunch of money by basically doing nothing besides just looking at the market prices and flipping cheaper items for more silver. To make this video I really did not spend a lot of time buying the best stuff and runes, but you could even take another step by buying the cheapest runes, cheapest weapons and then sell it for even more profit. So overall my main objective with this video is to show you multiple ways that you can make money and it's up to you in which one you want to use. For further information and more in-depth analysis I recommend to watch my video where I go further in this item flipping method. But then as I mentioned the black market, you can basically do the same thing by looking how much items sell in the black market. So then you buy from the normal marketplace and sell it in here. And then lastly as I predict that bunch of players will be now using this method from watching this video. So for players that are maybe watching a bit later from the release date, remember that each city has its own marketplace aka the action house. So you can do it multiple times and in multiple cities. And then when you really can't find any items to flip, then for example teleport to the Carolion, look at prices, then go to the Tetford and look at prices again. And if you see a big price difference, then just buy in Carolion, then transport it to Tetford and resell it for profit and it's that simple. Simple. So then moving over to one of the last ways to make money which are the hardcore expeditions. So these expeditions are like any other open world dungeon, but only you can enter them with 5 man groups and there is no PvP enabled. So first of all you can find the 5 man group which you can do by joining Albion online discord servers or more commonly by just opening the Albion looking for group text channel and joining groups that are looking for players. As these dungeons don't have PvP, they won't give you the best money and fame. So the way you overcome this is by using the highest item score gear 
and finishing these dungeons in the shortest amount of time. So now by speedrunning these dungeons they will be profitable and 100% safe from other players. So this is the easiest way to make money and level up your weapon at the same time. But it will require for you to spend the initial money for your best gear. So it's up to you if this is how you want to make money. But if sometimes you really want to turn off your brain and just grind for easy and fast silver then this is definitely a good option to do. And then moving over to the last and final money making way which is the faction transporting. So faction transporting aka the trade missions are activity available through the faction warfare that involves purchasing city hard fragment resource in your faction city and transporting that item to a smuggling post near another city. The trade routes lead deep into the enemy territory, meaning that the risks are high but it will be super fun and it is a simple and quick way to make some easy silver. To start your trading mission you have to be in one of the big cities and by pressing on the minimap you have to find an icon that is called faction enlistment. Then when you find the place click on the faction guy. Then if you haven't already then click flag which will enlist you in this city's faction and give you this purple icon or any other different colors depending on which city you are joining. Then from here we want to open our faction chat and find other faction players that are right now playing and then we want to join them. Our mission is to level up our faction status and get to at least 9000 points which then we can use to buy divine heart resource 3 times and then we can start the trade mission. We get this purple points by participating in the faction warfare which is holding faction points, killing other faction players and much more. So then with all this said, when we have done a bit of pvp and faction warfare which is by the way in the yellow zones so you can't lose anything. But when we have got to 9000 points we want to return to the faction guy and buy 3 of these resources. Then we click on the next tab and we select in which cities we want to complete the mission and then we can start the mission by clicking on accept the mana contract. When you accept the contract you will get direction on where you will need to go. So then your mission is to not get killed by other faction members and deliver the goods to the specific location which will be shown and after that is done come back to the city and you will get your rewards. Here in this section tab which is called faction goods you can see all the items that you can get and you can use them or sell them for easy the silver in the marketplace. And then lastly if this is not self explanatory already but to do these missions you will need to invest upfront some money by buying a tank gear and a decent mount which is the spectral bear, grizzly bear or saddle winter bear. And then the tank gear could be a build with something like one hand mace, sacred scepter, guardian armor, knight helmet and knight boots. This gear is meant in case if you get dismounted then you still have a lot of defensives to survive and run away from the enemies and that's about it. So with that said I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Albion online guides that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace.